Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Zorin OS Pro. Now about a month ago I did a review on the Core Edition, which states for basic use on modern computers. Today we're going to go ahead and go with the Pro version, which costs $39 to download. Before we get started, please don't forget like and subscribe or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything and at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. Also, if you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are in the description below. Zorin OS Pro. What does it offer that Core doesn't? Gives you premium desktop layouts. They look like Mac OS, Windows 11, classic layout, or maybe even Ubuntu plus some standard layouts. You also get professional grade creative suite of apps, advanced productivity software, it includes the Pro Lite Edition for older PCs, so if you download it, you actually get one that you can put on up-to-date PCs, and then they'll include the Lite that you can put on older hardware, and then support the development of Zorn OS. So what you do is you go to download, put your name in, is it a gift, yes or no, billing United States, you put in your credit card number or PayPal or Alipay, however you do it. You can subscribe to their newsletter if you wish. Then you click complete order. Then a screen will pop up and say your order has been processed. Now the next thing you're going to do is zip on over to your email. You'll have an email from Zorin OS. Just open it up. It'll have a download button. You click on it. It'll have your serial key. You can put that up for your records and then download it and you'll be good to go. Right now we're on MX Linux. So what you'll do is you'll want to go do a search on your applications. And you'll want to look for USB Maker, MX Live USB Maker. Password for root. Now, once you have the ISO downloaded, what you'll do is come in here and select your targeted device. You'd select your USB. Then you could select your ISO. You'd go over, select your ISO from downloads, and it would populate. Once that's done, you can encrypt it if you want. I don't recommend it. You're just making a live USB. Then you could click next. You do have the option also of downloading Bellina Etcher. You could go over to their website, download it for Linux 64, and then install it from there. I've had real good luck with the MX Live USB Maker. If you do have issues, just shoot me a message and we'll get it worked out. So once your USB is made, what you want to do now, before you do anything else, if you just want to test it in live mode, that's fine. You'll want to go over and look up your type of equipment, what kind of machine you're using, and do a search and find out what the hotkey is to get into your boot menu. Once you have that, you need to shut off your PC, restart it, hotkey in, and select your USB to boot from. That's what I'm getting ready to do, so I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, as you can see, we're booting into it. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the file system check. I don't recommend that. You can, if you're wanting to do a full install, let it do the file system check. Right now, we're just booting it up in a virtual machine so we can go over some things. But this is Zorin OS Pro. There we go. And of course, you're going to see the familiar Try Zorin OS or the Install Zorin OS. It is based on Ubuntu, so you get kind of the same thing across the board. If you were to install, you would just click on Install. You would pick your keyboard layout. And then, of course, right here, it would tell you to pick the drive you want to put it on, but because I'm not installing, you would pick your drive, you could erase the whole disk, install it by itself, pick the name, computer, password, and then install. And here is the desktop you're going to be met with. So if you download it, pay for it, throw it on a USB, throw it on a virtual machine, this is the desktop you're going to be met with. So first thing we want to do so we're going to go down here and open up Firefox and open up their website. And as you can see, when you open up Firefox, Google is your standard search engine. You can also pick Wikipedia, YouTube, or you can do searches on Twitter. And I do believe you can just zip over here to settings, search, and you can change your default search engine if you want. Let's just pick DuckDuckGo. Close out of settings, close out of Firefox, reopen Firefox, and it's still showing Google up here. Let's see if I do a search right here. Let's just say eBuzz Central. It's doing searches in Google. So let's double check 
what the issue is here. Settings. Home. Maybe I'm doing that wrong. Home page and new windows. So it's the custom URL, start.zorn.com. I guess they have it set up that way. So quite honestly, I want to go to Firefox Home because I don't want Google in my face, if that makes sense. So we'll refresh that. There we go. We got Firefox Home. So let's go back over to Zorn OS and some things we're going to take a look at, what they state on their website, what you get for the $39. You get premium desktop layouts, professional grade creative suites, advanced productivity software, includes a pro light edition, and then supports the development team. So let's minimize that. Let's go down here. So should we look at settings first to see what kind of looks we have? Let's go ahead and go to settings. Network, Bluetooth, background. Do we want to change the background a little bit? Is that a little bit too white? Let's go with something a little bit more subdued maybe. There we go. Let's do that. Notifications, search, applications, mouse pad, removable media, default applications, date and time. That's your typical things that we see on the core version. So where would we find a way to change the layouts? Games, accessories, barrier, Kuha, text editor. What text editor does it come with? G-Edit. Awesome. That's what I thought it was, but I wanted to make sure before I opened my mouth. Let's go back up. Zorin Appearance. Gee, guys, if it would have been a snake, it would have bit me. It was right there. So we're going to play around with these appearances a little bit. So here's the layout. This is pretty much what you can see in Gnome Manjaro. And Gnome Manjaro is free. You can change the layouts in it if you want to. But I'm looking for, I guess this is the Windows 11 type theme. Let's try it out. There you go. And I guess when you click here, you get the box like, okay, I I can see that. And then you've got the old school Unity Ubuntu type theme. Okay. And then I guess that would be Mac OS theme. I can see that. A lot of people have been... Honing in on the Windows 11 look for the simple fact that the Windows FX distribution I looked at the other day is pretty popular among the viewers that I have. But there's some issues with it. I went over it in the second video I did on it. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it right here. Because people have sent their money in and received nothing. They haven't received a serial key to get a better version of it. Some of the claims they made on their website, a bit sketchy that you can run EXE and MSI files out of the box, which you can't. So that's why we're taking a look at Zorin Pro. I like the layout. I think I'll leave it like this. Let's look at a theme. You can go other. We're on Zorin. You can go other. Let's see what kind of options you have here. Add way to dark. Can you do a dark theme on? Okay, hold on. Let's just go back. Let's leave that alone. Let's go back to the Zorin theme. We can leave it dark. We can make the background dark. Okay, I like that. Maybe a red accent color. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like the look of that. So let's go interface. Title bar buttons, you can have them on the right. You can have them on the left. Enable animations. Jelly mode, for those of you who don't know what that is. It's wobbly windows. So we'll go ahead and turn that off because I don't like my eyes bouncing everywhere. Desktop, icon size, icons on the desktop. I want to shut that off. I don't like icons on the desktop. And then fonts. These are big enough for me right now, I guess. But I do want to go back. I think the red is throwing me off just a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the blue. Give us a little bit different accent there. So that Zorin appearance. I like it. But like I said... Those layouts are available on Manjaro GNOME as well. So, But if Arch is not your cup of tea, Zorn is definitely the route to go there. Let's go back and see what else they said. Professional grade creative suite of apps. Let's see what we got there. So we've got additional drivers, archive manager, R-Door 6. That's record and mix and master audio. Let's open that up. Our door is a digital audio workstation. You can use it to record, edit, and mix multi-track audio. So let's move forward. 
Let's move forward. Ask our door to play back material as it is being recorded. Sure, that's fine. Use a okay, that's fine. Apply. Okay, session startup. So open. Audio MID MIDI settings. Okay, it looks pretty good. So that's something you can do audio with. Then you got Audacity as well. Backups, break timer, computer break reminds for GNOME, boot repair, Blender out of the box. Let's see if that pops up. Okay, so there's Blender pre-installed out of the box. Pretty nice. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back down here. We've got Blanket. Listen to different sounds. Barrier. Keyboard and mouse sharing solution. Now this one I've heard about. Barrier lets you easily share your mouse and keyboard between multiple computers on your desk and it's free open source. Just move your mouse off the edge of one computer screen onto another. You can even share all your clipboards. All you need is a network connection. Barrier is cross-platform, works on Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. Then you just click Next. Then you can set this up. Set it up on your server, set it up on your network. So that's pretty awesome. So if you're using two different computers, you have a desktop and you're using a laptop, you can actually move your mouse off this screen, take it to your desktop, and do work. Pretty impressive. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back up here. Blanket. Listen to different audio sounds. We already covered that. Calculator, calendar, characters, cheese, color picker, disk usage. It's got dark table out of the box. Okay, so there's dark table. You've got light table, dark room, and other. So you've got all this you can work with. So that comes with it out of the box. That's pretty impressive. Let's go back down to apps. Let's scroll down a little bit. You've got evolution as your mail. You've got feeds is your newsreader from GNOME where you can plug in your RSS feeds. Let's see what file manager you have. And this looks like files. It is 3.36.3 stable. I like the theming of it. It's just light, quick, doesn't get in your way and lets you get your work done. So that's pretty impressive. So let's close out of that. Let's go back down. We were at files. You got Firefox. You got Folate. Read and view ebooks on. Fonts. Home bank. Free, easy, personal accounting for everyone. I want to say that this was something like Quicken. I'd have to do some more reading on it. You know, if you're somebody that wants to keep your budget close at hand and you're using something like Quicken or are familiar with something like Quicken, you can come back in here and you can set it up and keep track of all your expenses, all the outgoing and all the incoming money that you have. But that's just something you can look into there is Home Bank. Help. It's got Handbrake, Gparted, GIMP, FreeCAD, uh, Computer Aided Drafting. It's pretty impressive. Inkscape, Install. You got Caden Live. You got Kua, Krita. You got the Libre Office Suite. You also get Libre CAD. So you got two CAD systems out of the box. Let's go back up. Okay, there's Minder, Minds, OBS Studios installed out of the box. You've got Mix. You got Pitavi, Power Statistics. You got your Software Center. You got Scribus, System Monitor. Let's see how heavy this system is. I've got it issued a whopping four CPUs, and I got it issued. 2.9 gigabytes of RAM. At present, we're using 1.8 gigabytes of RAM at rest with just resource monitor open. That is a little heavy, in my opinion. Uh, but GNOME has been running a little bit heavier compared to your KDEs or your XFCEs. But if you like the familiarity of Windows and a system that'll make that transition easier, you know, you're going to give up just a little bit. So let's close out of that. Terminal, virtual box is installed out of the box, transmission, tour, text editor, VLC, weather, Zorn appearance, and then Zorn Connect will let you connect to your phone. Sync your phone's notifications with your computer, browse photos from your phone. You can reply to SMS messages, share files and web links between devices. Use your phone as a remote control for your computer. So you can set this up. I use something similar to it on my KDE desktop, which is... KDE Connect. So if this works like that, which I have no doubt it does, you're definitely going to utilize it quite a bit. What are the pluses? I would recommend Zorn OS 16 Pro over Windows FX for the simple fact that you can send your $39 in and you get something in return. Like I said, I had a viewer, a patron to the channel actually, send $20 into Windows FX in crickets. He hasn't heard anything, hasn't got any links sent to him. He's sent in trouble tickets. Nobody's answering him. 
Zorn OS, you send them your money, you get a download link, download it, downloads a little bit over four gigs, and then you can install it, or you can run it live off a USB or throw it in a virtual machine and give it a test drive. Now, I know there's going to be people ask me about the software center, being how it's based on Ubuntu. I'm going to guess that the software center looks a lot like what you're going to see in Ubuntu. And yes, it is pretty much what you're used to using in Ubuntu or what you're using in Linux Mint. You've got your installs, you've got updates, you've got your explorer. So you can just look around, find the software you want to install, get it installed and be ready to go. So my verdict is it's it's a solid distribution. You can go the free route, you can go the paid route. Zorn OS, hands down, better than the Windows FX, wannabe Windows distro. And if you send them money, Zorn gets back with you and takes care of you. Tell me what you think of Zorn Pro OS. Is it a distribution you might download and give a shot to? Is it one you might pay $40 for? Let me know in the comments below. Before you go today, do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are in the description down below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.